Hey everyone, this is Stelly FD with Closeout, and today I want to talk about accents in sales, right? I get this question quite a lot, and I thought uh, finally it might make sense to share some of the advice I give uh, to the world and ask for advice back and stories and best practices. But quite frequently, people will approach me, founders, salespeople, and they will ask me, hey Stelly, how does my accent play into my potential success or failure in sales? Right, um, so a lot of people are traveling from all around the world to Silicon Valley. Um, they're trying to make it in the U.S., and usually these people have strong accents, right? And maybe they come to me for advice because I have an accent myself, uh, and it was even much worse, uh, you know, 11 years ago when I first arrived here. So a lot of people that have a strong accent are really concerned about it, and they're wondering, am I getting potential? Some of them are worrying up front. Am I going to get in trouble? Will people not want to respond to me? Will people not like or listen or uh, resonate with what I'm trying to pitch them because I have an accent? So before they even experience it in real life, they are worried about it. Um, and some people, they do you know, encounter some resistance or they do encounter some pushback. And because they know they have an accent, they're self-conscious of it. They're wondering, is it because the pitch is hard? Is it because it's just generally tough to do sales and everybody's encountering this kind of a problem? Or is it because I have an accent? So here are my few thoughts on this, right? And I'll make this very quick. Number one, you know, it, it all depends. Context really matters. And it depends where in the world you're trying to sell and who you're trying to sell to, right? Whoever your buyers will determine how big of a factor your accent plays or not. <coughs> so, in Europe, in many countries, like in Germany where I grew up, or even in Greece, uh, where I'm originally from, if you have an incredibly strong accent, that usually, to most ears, will translate to you being a lower-class citizen. It sucks, honestly, and it's my least favorite thing about some of the cultures, although both Germany and Greece are incredible countries, but it means that it's a real strong handicap. If you have a strong accent... People are gonna, you're just gonna have to overcome that judgment that people have about you. And it's gonna be a very strong knee jerk reaction judgment that you are lower class, lower educated, low income type of a person, right? Which usually doesn't translate well to them wanting to do business with you or wanting to listen to your advice or, you know, follow your sales pitch. Um, in countries like the US and many others around the world, an accent, especially if you're thinking about the coast, the West Coast and the East Coast in the US. Accents are not as big of a handicap as they are around the world. Because there's so much immigration, the West Coast and East Coast, from all around the world, and because people are used to listening to accents from people that are highly educated, incredibly successful, and very wealthy, um, they don't necessarily think just because you have a strong accent means you're a lower class citizen. You could be, you know, a CEO, you could be in government. Like <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger is a great example, has a terrible, terrible strong accent, and he became a movie star and you know a politician. And so it's not as big of a handicap here because people are more used to it, more accustomed to it, and they've made a lot of experiences that tell them that immigrants are some of the most successful, hardworking people and a lot of very successful people in the U.S. Also, having a strong accent doesn't necessarily mean that you're not a real American, right? Which is kind of a weird concept, but it's this is such a country that's based on immigration still um, that the rules here don't apply that apply in many other countries around the world that are not fundamentally built as strongly on immigration. Now, having said all this, at the end of the day, who really truly will determine if it matters or not is your buyer the person that you're trying to sell. If it's a very traditional buyer, if it's somebody that is very conservative, if it's somebody that doesn't like to listen to accents or is not used to that, if they're not used to it, it's going to be a, a, a challenge or a hurdle and you're just going to have to find a way to work around it. Um, my number one tip is don't overthink it. Don't get too self-conscious. I've seen so many people, some people that have strong accents, and they're so in their head about it. They're so self-conscious and I was one of them 11 years ago. Anytime I had an interaction I had this little internal dialogue going on that was basically telling myself, oh my God, you sound so stupid. You sound so stupid. You sound like you don't know what you're talking about. Oh my God, you don't know the right word. You don't know how to express yourself. I was so physically uncomfortable and mentally uncomfortable because I was used to being able to express myself really richly and confidently. And then when I came to the US, I wasn't anymore. I lost that. 
And that really made me struggle. And it took a few years for me to get comfortable with it. But I've met people that have just arrived here a few days in. They have a much more terrible accent than I ever had and a really terrible vocabulary. And they don't give a fuck, right? They don't give two shits about it. And that energy, that passion, that comfort, that excitement, that confidence, it really translates. It really makes you think, well, this like, emotionally it makes you as a listener think, well, this person doesn't seem to care, so maybe I shouldn't care. So if you can, step number one is really don't overthink things. Don't get too self-conscious. Find a way to sell yourself on the idea that in the end, it won't matter and you will be able to really overcome this in most cases. That's step number two, one. Step number two is try to realize, you know, who is my buyer and how many times do they listen to people with accents? How many times do they interact with people with accent and are they really not used to it or maybe they're totally used to it and it doesn't, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't represent a real problem. And whenever you have a, a trusted relationship, if you're still in doubt, if you're not really sure, just ask them, ask them for advice. Go, hey, we've been in business now. We've worked for, together for two months. One thing I always wanted to ask you is a little bit of advice in terms of my accent, right? You might have noticed it. I have a strong accent. You never seemed to care. We were able to do business together. We were able to work well together. But I'm wondering, how big of a factor was in the early days? Do you think it's going to really, you know, be an obstacle for me to succeed in the market? Just ask your buyers, your customers for advice and for feedback and see what they tell you if you're unsure, if you're not sure how people think about your accent. The next thing is realize that uh, what kind of an accent you have and who your buyer is, all that context truly matters. Some accents to some ears are really charming. Some are sexy, right? I don't know why, but a French accent pretty much universally around the world is considered super sexy, right? Um, and some accents are uh, considered, you know, not that sexy, honestly, and frankly, right? It, it really, it sucks, but it is what it is. Some accents to native ears will sound lower class, will sound very harsh, some will be easier to listen to and some will be very hard to understand. Just realize, you know, where are you? And if you have a really charming accent, use it. Utilize it as a tool. And if you have an accent that people, you know, are rubbed the wrong way or have a really hard time understanding, you need to find a way around that, which is my next point. Even if your accent is an obstacle, it's just that. It's just another obstacle. It's not the end. It's not an excuse. It's not the reason for your failure. There's many obstacles. There's always going to be some challenges people have. I mean, there's so many examples of people that have created incredible wealth, although they had real, real uh, handicaps. They had real things that, that gave them a massive disadvantage. And that disadvantage, they learned to find a way to turn around and make it an advantage of theirs. Some people use the, the disadvantage as an excuse to feel like a victim, to feel like the world is unfair. Uh, to feel sorry for themselves. And some people take these disadvantages and they use them as a chance to get stronger. They use them as a chance to stand out, to become more unique. I mean, there's so many inspirational examples of people that have real physical handicaps, right? They, they came back from a war and they don't have their legs anymore and they run marathons and they break records and they do these incredible physical feats, although they don't even have, you know, legs or arms or, you know, they have real handicaps that are physical, not just mental. So don't use it as an excuse. Even if you have a harsh accent, an accent that your buyers might not love, that's not the end of the road. That doesn't mean you won't succeed. Some people will take it as an excuse to feel sorry for themselves and fail. And some will succeed despite those obstacles. Be one of those people. Choose to be the exception, not the rule. And then the next thing is a practical tip. You know, I've, I've talked to a founder the other day um, that has such a strong accent, a, a European one, even to my European ears, I had a really hard time understanding them, right? Um, that can be a real problem. I didn't, it, it was not about me, you know, some accents is about like perception. If I judge that this person sounds sexy or sounds, you know, lower class or sounds weird, but sometimes it's just purely about being able to compute and parse the language through the mental computer, right? Sometimes an accent is so heavy, I might think it's charming, but I don't understand a single word of what you're saying, right? That can be a real obstacle if you're trying to sell people on things, if you don't really understand what you're saying, right? So what do you do in those situations? Um, well, my, my advice would be very generically, whenever you can in the early days, 
meet with people in person. Because when you meet with people in person, you don't just have the words and the content as a communication channel, but you have tonality and even more importantly, you have body language. And you have proximity. Proximity can really help parse through difficult accents to understand language. If you can't meet in person, try to, as, as often as possible, have video calls. So, so instead of just calling somebody, try to be able to have them see you and be able for you to see them and see their facial expressions. So when you say something and they don't understand it, they might be, you know, they might be leaning in, they might be listening harder, <laughs> you know, unconsciously do something like that. They might seem puzzled, they say yes, but their body language is saying no or saying like, I don't really understand what you just said. And they're going to be able to not just hear your voice, but see your body, see your face, see how friendly you are, see that you're in a nice office, that you're dressed really nice, and then see your body expressions that will be an added layer of communication and signal strength that will help them parse through your um, language and the, 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 the accent barrier, right? So, my advice would be whenever you can meet in person, whenever you can meet in person, do video calls. And if you can't do video calls, then you'll have to make a call. But my advice for you is to speak a little slower than you usually would, a little louder than you usually would, so people can really parse you. You have to pace yourself. You can't talk fast and on low volume and have a strong accent. You're just making it impossible for people to hear you uh, and, and understand you. And whenever you say something that's really, really important, just underline it, just double, double down on it and repeat it, right? Sometimes you just want to repeat the really important things to give the listener a chance to really hear you. And whenever you're in doubt, you can always tell people, you can be upfront about it and say, hey, this is going to be a really stimulating and challenging call. You know, I have some really exciting stuff to talk to you about. I realize I have a strong accent. So I want to give you permission if at any point I say something you don't understand, Please let me know. Please tell me if I could, you know, ask me to repeat it. I'm still practicing to get rid of my accent or to make myself easier to understand. And you can be a coach of mine and help me out. Uh, so feel free. Don't feel bad about it. Feel free to tell me if something I say don't make sense or if you want me to repeat it again. If you do that, you're going to create such goodwill with people. You're going to also create the impression that you're really confident because most people, again, they lack the confidence. They want to hide away or run away from from their accent in, in conversation, they, they, they pretend they don't exist. If you know you have a strong accent that people struggle understanding, and you have to be with them on a, on a call, just bring it up yourself proactively. Give people permission to ask you to repeat something. People feel bad about asking somebody to repeat something two or three times, right? I, I've been there myself before. Um, on the phone with somebody and they said, said something I didn't understand and I asked them, could you please repeat it? And they say it again and I don't understand it. And it makes me feel bad to ask for a third time, right? Because I don't want to criticize them. I don't want to hurt them. But if they gave me the permission, I would feel the confidence to ask them again. And it's important to ask again because I need to understand what you're saying in order to be able to agree with you to purchase your product, in order for you to be able to help me become a customer. All right, that's it. That's all really. I, uh, that's all I got on this topic. Uh, I'd love to hear your stories. So if you have funny stories, if you have tactics, if you have best practices... Please share them freely. I'm sure there's courses out there how to get rid of your, your accent. I've never taken one, so I can't really recommend anything. Um, but I, I do think that you could probably do easy, some easy research um, and, and find some maybe uh, easy tools or courses or, or you know, some easy practices that you could follow for the first few weeks at least to accelerate your ability to speak with less of a heavy accent and have more success in your persuasion. Um, all right, that's it. That's all I got. If you haven't done that yet, go to blog.close.io and make sure to subscribe to our blog. And until then, see you next time.